Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Peter coming at you through the tubes of the internet. Today, taking a look at the latest release from The Hold Steady, an album called Thrashing Through the Passion. I'm excited to discuss and glad you could join. Thrashing Through the Passion, released August 16th, 2019 via French Kiss Records, is the seventh studio LP from Brooklyn-based bar rock band The Hold Steady. The group currently consists of six members, frontman Craig Finn, guitarist Tad Kubler and Steve Selvage, bassist Galen Polivka, drummer Bobby Drake, and returning keyboardist Franz Nikolai. Backstory the Hold Steady formed in the wake of Minnesota rock band Lifter Puller when key members Craig and Tad moved out of Minneapolis and re-established themselves in NYC. Since then, the Hold Steady have been mainstays in the indie rock scene for over 15 years. Vocalist Craig Finn's signature speak-sing hybrid delivery of incredibly dense lyricism is used to convey hilarious character-rich stories about sex, drugs, and rock and roll often borrowing literary and religious imagery to do so. The backing band draw on Americana bar rock sounds to create both rollicking punk and smooth ballads. The Hold Steady's latest offering, Thrashing Through the Passion, sticks to the same musical and thematic approaches, but was rolled out much differently than their previous albums. Electing to release individual singles to coincide with tour residencies, and then compiling those tracks into an album once several had backed up. The band combined five one-off favorites with five new cuts recorded in a single session in the mountains of upstate New York. And while this patchwork assembly seems like it could leave the album disjointed, Finn has such a clarity of vision for his songwriting that the tracks seem just as cohesive as if they were all recorded together. The album also sees the return of fan favorite keyboardist Franz Nikolai, and his contributions on synth really take the band back to their former glory. The old timers prove they still have a lot to offer on thrashing and land another awesome album after almost two decades in the game. Track by track analysis. This release has 10 tracks and clocks in at 36 minutes. The Hold Steady absolutely pack the half hour with content. Every track's brimming with lyrics and most cuts have interesting transitional elements to keep things fresh musically too. The classic rock and bar band instrumentals can occasionally introduce some corny sounds into the mix but most of those are used in a conscious way to represent the themes and characters, almost in a Peter and the Wolf type style. There's just so many lyrical moments here that command attention, and combined with the swift runtime, the record never has a chance to feel dull. Track one, Denver haircut. Shave his head at the airport, and a bar at the end of the concourse. To start the album, Finn drops us in with some unsavory characters right off the bat. We meet a guy likely on the lam rushing to change his appearance in an airport bathroom and a girl hanging around the concourse bar looking to score whatever she can get her hands on. The lyrics string one clever idea into another as the story follows these characters' misadventures, traveling from druggy parties to dive bars to roach motels and ending up with a character on a wild hallucinatory trip getting his wallet stolen while he's zonked out. So much personality comes through in these three minutes and that trend continues throughout the full album. If it just sorta of has to be worth it as this track states, then I think this one goes way above and beyond. It's an incredible opener, and it signals that the band's back from their hiatus in a big way. Track 2, Epaulettes. This tune bursts out of the gate with an instrumental that seems like it can barely fit within the track boundaries. Finn's rush delivery backed by the bubbly bop bop vocal gives the tune big time energy and this frantic pace is perfectly in sync with the lyrical themes. Craig's enthralled with this girl from her authoritarian look to the sort of high tension aura she gives off and there's a sense of urgency to everything here. It just makes the song a rush. Finn's singing really shines on the chorus here too. He grabs a folksy melody and rides the driving instrumental with a bouncy delivery. 
The music and Vox push each other forward till the very end, even dropping into chugging rock for the track's finale. It's a relentless push, and I love it. Track 3, You Did Good Kid. You did good kid, you did good kid. Although this track's title sounds like a positive message, the way it's delivered in the chorus as gang vocal has an eerie and menacing tone. The ringy synth used during the verses sounds like it could be the Adams Family doorbell or something, and there's just a minor note gloom coating the entire song. The lyrics here are damn dark too. We meet a character with the light in their eyes diminished, who's being exploited because their drug habits have led them down a dark path. They seem too deep in this lifestyle to escape, and the listeners transport into this environment with them. The tune gets into some grimy shit, waking up on a spray-painted mattress, searching out another mouth in the smoke. I think I just could have done with this one being a minute or so shorter. It's nearly the longest song on the release and does almost too good of a job of seeming ominous. The sleaze factor's maxed out and it's well executed but still kind of unpleasant. Track 4, Traditional Village. The professor was pointing out the subtle distinctions, the difference between plunder and village. Here Finn drops us in with the group running a grift, faking injuries to score prescriptions and living in a makeshift commune run by con men. The instrumental for this track isn't anything too special, but I love the synergy between music and lyrics, like when Craig mentions listening to Zeppelin while stoned and the band break into a psychedelic groove. There's such a great interplay between the two elements on this release, and this is a good example. For the tune's final verse, Craig introduces military imagery to go along with the religious symbolism, and it all works together perfectly to convey the idea of scammers looking to make a buck. Leveraging new technology to use for updated ways to invade, the listener gets the overwhelming sense that this new world's just a subtle variation of the old one. Christianity and war are well-worn motifs in Finn's songwriting, but here they seem completely fresh. If you're worried about the Hold Steady getting too complacent with their recurring theme seven albums in, I think this track proves they have new places to take these ideas and new story beats to introduce along the way. Awesome cut. Track five, Blackout Sam. That winter we were dealing with unrest in the interior. The Hold Steady slow things down at the halfway point of this release to drop the album's chillest and longest tune. The usual blasting guitars take a backseat to a smooth piano lead, and combined with Finn's barely sung delivery, it gives a bit of a Randy Newman vibe. Horns and even a kazoo-esque guitar effect join the mix as the tune progresses, but the instrumental remains low-key throughout. This full mix paired with the laid-back vibe makes for an interesting diversion sound-wise. And this plays well off the lyrical themes, as Craig describes just hanging in there during sad times. The characters muddle through routines and try to stave off the gloom after the loss of a local legend, pondering their own mortality and maybe making a few subtle lifestyle changes to clean up their acts. True to form though, getting high is still the overall goal, but now feeling safe and protected while doing so has a renewed appeal. It's a good cut to wrap up side A of the record before the band move into some greatest hits from their previously released singles. Local legends with the far away eyes. I wanna make you feel protected and high. Track 6, Entitlement Crew. Now here's the church. Yes, the steeple. The synth tone on this track has a breezy and ethereal sound that works great as a representation of the tune's titular entitlement crew gliding through town. Of all the shady characters Fenn describes in this release, this group seems like they're uniquely insufferable, except for one girl he's fixated on. Similar to the dictator chic character from Epaulette, he can put the general unlikability of the rest of the douche crew out of his mind as long as he has her to focus on. 
This track has some of my favorite lines on the entire release, like... There's so much talk of planning elaborate schemes on this album, but here the pair are being almost brutally honest with themselves, recognizing that they're getting in over their heads with some heavy shit, and realistically, that maybe they're not all that smart to begin with. It shows great self-awareness and makes their brief relationship really endearing. As the tracks wind and down, the instrumental harkens back to Stuck Between Stations, with another of the most blasting ass breakdowns the band's ever done. This tune proves the Hold Steady still have the chops to pull off some dancey chaos, and they crush it here. Track 7, T-Shirt Tux. This song's built around a super cheesy guitar riff, but it fits the T-Shirt Tux wearing character perfectly. The guy with the piano key tie is a coked out chode, but Craig's character here is stuck in a duo playing with him, inextricably linked in a sort of purgatory state. And this doom vibe lingers over the entire track. There's a dude rattling off trivia, trying to impress a completely uninterested girl, and a general failure to launch in terms of scoring drugs. The instrumental here is kind of incessant and annoying, but that's the mood the tune's going for, and I think it's used really effectively to convey the feeling of only ever having tiny little triumphs to go along with massive bloody failures. Track 8, Star 18. I know he made plans to mean Spokane, but the way I make plans, you gotta take it with a grain of salt. This tune continues exploring a downward spiral the album's characters are stuck in, complete with flaked on plans and neglected commitments. Finn again draws on the time the band the to describe running parallel to superstardom, but never actually achieving it, fated to remain in relative obscurity. So that idea of dreams fading away, combined with imagery about Hemingway's downfall, really drives the theme of the tune home. Rather than getting ahead, these characters are just getting involved with more creeps. No credits given for their accomplishments, and they instead have to just... When this thing that's never coming back in style comes back in style, give me a call at this number that doesn't exist. It's just a totally hopeless situation, and it's communicated perfectly in the song. Track 9, The Stove and the Toaster. A frantic and menacing tone comes through on this cut, as Finn describes complex steps for infiltrating a heavily guarded stash house. Despite saying early on that this plan is going to be simple, the bulk of the lyrical content here outlines the convoluted process of the break-in, with the second verse almost taking on a South Town Girls quality in the way it lists out directions. Of course, the tune wouldn't be complete without including some dubious characters as well, and in this case those roles are played by the chef and the chauffeur the inside men supplying intel on how to carry out the heist. Craig goes out of his way to ensure the listener that these are trustworthy partners, but of course that doesn't turn out to be the case. Shouts out to Tad Kubler on the lead guitar during the outro of this tune. The entire ploy predictably goes to shit to close the track, and he's in the background going ham with a screeching guitar solo while everything else falls apart. The instrumental does a great job of building a foreboding tone throughout, and this last riff really drives things home. Track 10, Confusion in the Marketplace. Princess came to breakfast looking puffy from the present zone. Someone's little sister had me marching to the metronome. Although this tune originally existed as a standalone single, it does a good job of bringing closure to the broader themes running through the album. We get characters who seem to be run dry, out of money and drugs, trying to recover from illness and shipping out of the city. There's an overall sense that things are winding down, but of course there's still some scheming to be had. 
With all the deals gone bad across the record, we get characters trying to capitalize on just that situation. It's a pretty hilarious concept that all that chaos has created an opportunity to swoop in and take advantage. The last line of the entire album is the perfect encapsulation of how these characters are just going to fall back into the same old patterns and the same old schemes. And I for one can't wait to hear what they get up to next. Verdict. Overall, I love this album. Craig's an all-time great songwriter, but he needs this group around him to bring it out. After several lackluster solo albums, having the full gang back together just takes his lyricism to the next level, and the band rock the instrumentals just as hard as ever. Every track here is solid, and the stories they tell are intertwined with the broader universe in such a cool way that spans the group's entire discography. The music and lyrics are absolutely locked in with each other throughout, and it makes for an incredible experience. For that reason, I'm going to give this release a score of 9 out of 10. So that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on the record. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the release, my critique, or the review format in general. Making this is a lot of work, but also fun and definitely worth it if it helps some people wrap their head around the record. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you next time. Vote for Daddy Bernie, bitch.